Much of the valley has been restored, and I follow the Rhonda stream, the babbling brook. The pied wagtails are busy preparing to nest, and a noble heron reclaims his old haunts. Ahead lies Mardi, first and last township in the valley, known in the tough years between the wars as Little Moscow, its massive working men's hall, its Kremlin. Ugly, battered, brooding, defiant, it's a relic and storehouse of Mardi's memories. For veterans, it speaks of a vivid and exciting time. Was this all? was the cathedral, the parliament, and anything else you could think of, or the place of Mardi. Alf has lived in Mardi all his life. His father, a West Indian sailor, came here looking for work and married a local girl. I love Mardi so, you know. I'm part of Mardi, and Mardi people think the same of me. My mother was a popa in the street. What's no. a popa? What's a popa? Now, every street, if it's a long street there, it might have had two or three bopas, but every street had a bopa. And if there was trouble, illness, uh, births, even death, like that, for laid out. Like that. Bopa was always on hand. My mother was a bopa. My father was daddy laws. Daddy. <laughs> Many a time it's the same, sitting on the front door with the kids around him, telling them the most marvellous stories about lions and tigers. Tell what he'd never seen a lion or a tiger. <laughs> As a young man, Alf sang in a group, the Whiffenpoofs, performing up and down the Ronda, and he recalls one of the songs. Mardi, that is the place for me. Mardi, I love you so. Swansea town is very pretty. Cardiff is pretty, also Bristol City, but it's Mardi, that is the place for me. Mardi, I love you so. There's Cumvelin, Ridvelin, any other old Velin, but Mardi is the place for me. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> oh, that's a song there about Mardi, Lovely. which is the place for me. For many years, hardship united the people. Communism expressed the spirit of many of them. In its heyday, party meetings were packed and people were expected to toe the line. A shopkeeper in Mardi or a newsagent by the name of Davis um, was asked by the Communist Party not to sell um, newspapers other than the um, Daily Worker. He refused to do this and writing, I believe it was, to the Western Mail, he mentioned or quoted that Mardi was becoming like Moscow. And I think that that name stuck. At the other end of town, well away from the working men's hall, this rusty ramshackle hut once played a part in the emotions and rivalries of Mardi politics. The story behind the hall is that it was built by business people back in 1910 when they were blocked from using the Mardi Workmen's Hall because of their objection uh, to the Communist Party controlling what they sold. I think the Communist Party's idea was fair distribution, but then the business people felt that this should be left to them and the freedom of the right to, to sell to people was theirs. In Wood Street lived Danny Lewis, the distinguished and unfortunate Arsenal goalkeeper. In 1927, Cardiff won the FA Cup 1-0 after Danny Lewis fumbled the ball. He was never allowed to forget it, as his sister recalls. He saved the ball, really, but it went in between his watering bayer and they said it was thrown owing to the jerseys, not being washed before they were done. So it seems that the jersey was a bit greasy. Well, I don't know what it was. But I know that they were going after that, that they had to wash them all before they played another time. Most of the newspapers sympathised. It was hard luck. But some sour and slanderous critics accused Danny Lewis of letting the ball in to help a Welsh team win the cup. Every cup final that was played, they always brought it up. Never mind who was playing for the cup, they always used to bring it up, you know, Dan Lewis, Arsenal goalkeeper, that was in big print always, to say that he gave the goal to Cardiff. 
see. And that was finishing him every time that he was seeing it in the papers. Well, of course it would, wouldn't it? It cut him to the quick. Of course it did. He was never the same after that. Tommy Hill, who lived in Mardi, was the champion funeral goer of Britain. In fact, he attended more than 3,000 of them, all in the Ronda. He was so enthusiastic that he was frequently seen running from one funeral to another, a little man in black. North Terrace in Mardi was the home of the amazing David Davis, who worked underground for nearly three quarters of a century. David Davis worked underground as a collier for 73 years. 73 years, how was that? Well, he actually started work when he was seven years of age. Um, probably never went to a school, but um, I'm told that at that age, his father used to carry him to work on his back. Probably the lad uh, hadn't even woken up in the morning and was taken to work by his father and then coming home exhausted in the night. And in those days, uh, there was no such thing as a pension scheme. And um, men worked while they were fit to work. And of course, to have worked until 80 years of age, he must have been quite fit. <laughs> well, he certainly earned what little rest he had. Over the stream outside Mardi, a simple little bridge leads to a hillside that was once naked and laid waste by coal mining. Now it's being forested and will be laid out as a country park. There's a proposal to name the bridge after one of the town's heroes, Frank Owen, who fought in the Spanish Civil War in the 1930s. The Mardi History Group is discussing the idea. As you know, Frankie was killed in the, in the Spanish Revolution. He's the only person um, that's not got any plaque of any recognition to the fact every other one that died from Wales has a recognition in his own village. Frank Owen was one of 34 Welshmen killed in Spain. His brother remembers. He was a rank communist. I remember this very well. I was standing in the Maddy Hall. I was only eight years old, 1926 I went back to. And across the road there were bums, they call them. You know, the bums, the bailiffs, is it? Was taking furniture away from this house because she couldn't pay the rent or pay, couldn't pay something. But what happened? Frank and a guy went over, tipped the van over, and I can see that van now when going back many years. What happened then? Down to jail, Cardiff again, or Swansea, wherever they went. Whenever there was trouble in Maddy, he was always there, ready to help out. I met people who was with Frank when he was killed. They were getting killed all around him, but they were defending Madrid, they were. And uh, Franco never took Madrid. He was given it, given it after, but he never took it. They were defending Madrid, but it was a hell of a battle. The last town of the Rondevach gives way to countryside. The workshop, which once rang to shouts and noise, long ago submitted to decay, rust and silence. Wildflowers form a healing bandage. The land, of course, is still scarred, but there was, after all, a great story and a tremendous struggle. We finish as we began in rugged grandeur. The towns are from the far below, their stories told. And for us, the dramatic outriders of the Brecon beacons and the freedom of the wind-whipped hills. Yes, Trevor returns next Thursday at 7.30 for the last programme in the series when he takes us across the South East Anglesey. Coming up next tonight, an hour-long special of Emmerdale and it's party time.